story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Four million people, something for everybody. Houses to live in. Places to work. Places to relax. Churches to pray. Most of them enjoy life and they try to hold on to it. A few of them have lost their grip. In my job, I get to know them all. I'm a cop. It was Monday, August 12th. We were working the day watch out of juvenile division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Stein. My name's Friday. We'd gotten a call that a seven-week-old baby had been abandoned in a bus terminal. There was no sign of the mother, no lead to her whereabouts. We had to find her. I've been waiting around to see people for hours. I don't know what to do. Yes, you did, baby. Where'd you go to sleep? Oh, close your eyes and go to sleep. Oh, your pain's a shame. Yes, ma'am. The report we got didn't go into detail. Some woman left the baby with you, is that it? Yes, as soon as we got off the bus this morning. She said she'd only be gone a few minutes. It's been hours. I don't know what to do. Did you know the woman, Ms. Lewis? Her name's Dorothy Miller. She's from Arizona. Tucson. We got off the bus, and she asked me if I'd hold her baby while she went to get her luggage. She said she'd meet me right there by the information desk. I've been waiting ever since. She hasn't come back. I don't know what to think. How well did you know this Dorothy Miller, ma'am? Well, not too well, but she seemed like such a nice girl, friendly, very sociable. We sat together all the way in. Uh -huh. You got on the bus with her at Tucson, is that it? Oh, no. I'm from Cincinnati. I got on a bus there and then went down to Dallas. I had a visit with an aunt of mine down there. Oh, I see. I uh, got another bus from Dallas to come out here. Went along the southern route. Very nice. The same bus I came in on this morning. I'm out here to meet my husband, Army Man. He's coming in on a transport from overseas. He's coming in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now, you say this Dorothy Miller boarded the bus at Tucson with a baby. She rode all the way into Los Angeles with you, is that right? Yes, right into the seapole. She sat in the seat next to mine. We struck up a conversation. Got to be quite good friends. Such a cute baby, I just can't imagine. Now, how about her description, Ms. Lewis? Anything unusual there? No, I wouldn't say so. A small girl, five foot three or four, I'd say, 110 or 15 pounds. Red hair, shoulder length, dark eyes, nice complexion, very pretty eyes. About how old would you say? Twenty. That's what she told me anyway. She said she had a birthday in May. I remember we talked about that. She was born under the same sign I was, Taras the Bull. Mm -hmm. And in all the talks you had with the Miller girl, she never gave you any reason to think that anything was wrong with her. She didn't seem to be fond or depressed about it. Perfectly normal girl, as far as I could tell. I just can't get over it. I can't imagine her doing anything like this. You checked around the depot, did you? You had her page? I talked to everyone in the place. The porters, ticket clerks, information desk, traveler's aides. Not one of them could help. I tried everybody. Okay. It's all right. We'll find your mother. You find me. She's wonderful. Just adorable. It's a little boy. She said his name's Steven. Yes, ma'am. Her own baby, so small and helpless. How could she go off and leave him? Well, I guess she had a reason. It must have been important. Seven-week-old baby, your own. What's more important than that? Before we left the bus depot, Frank contacted the clerk at the depot information desk and left our card with him. If anyone came in to make inquiries about the abandoned child, he was to advise them to get in touch with us. 11.48 a.m. The woman the baby had been left with, Mrs. Marjorie Lewis, agreed to return to the office and give us a complete report on everything she knew about the case. As soon as we got back, we briefed Captain Stein on what had happened and he assigned policewoman Betty Stone to come in and help out with the baby. A cursory examination seemed to indicate there was nothing abnormal about the baby, no apparent deformities. 
We checked the blanket and the baby's clothing, but we found no identifying marks of any use to it. Policewoman Stone made the baby comfortable for the time being, and then she began to check through the contents of the small valise, which the baby's mother had left with Mrs. Lewis. It contained the usual assortment, baby oil, powder, dextrose, a few cans of milk, a couple of blankets, and a supply of diapers. Frank and I continued the interview, Mrs. Lewis. Is this the Miller woman's first baby? Do you know, or did she have the nursing? Yes, it's her first. That's what she told me. Did you talk about the baby's health at all? Was there any trouble there? Well, she did say she had some trouble with the formula at first. It didn't seem to suit the baby. It wasn't anything serious, though. Matter of fact, that does worry me a little bit, Sergeant. What's that? The baby's formula. Mrs. Miller did say it had to be fixed a special way. Some special medicine she put in it, too. Are you sure the baby's going to get good care? Yes, ma'am. No need to worry. He'll be moved to the dental hospital. They'll look after things. Frankly, I can't help but feel a little guilty about all this. What do you mean, Mrs. Lewis? I mean, turning the baby over to you. It'll probably be put in some kind of an orphan's home. I can't help but think that maybe the Miller girl picked me out. She had to give the baby away, and she wanted me to have him. And I turn around and hand him over to the police. It does make me feel a little guilty. It's probably expected more of me. There's no need to feel like that, ma'am. It's not your responsibility. I suppose not, but I just can't help feeling that way, running out on a little baby like that, leaving him alone. You wouldn't be in a position to take care of him anyway, would you? No, I suppose not. I'd have to talk to my husband first. He'll be in tomorrow from overseas. He'll be back to the same old life again, living in hotels. I guess it wouldn't work even if they'd let me adopt him. It gets me down sometimes. I've always liked children. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Lewis. We appreciate your cooperation and everything you've done here. Not at all, Sergeant. I only wish I could be more help. Would you mind telling us where you'll be stopping in town, ma'am? It's possible we might want to contact you again. Well, I don't have any reservations. I was thinking of staying at a hotel closer to downtown. Well, there's a big convention going on in town now, Ms. Lewis. Most of the places are pretty crowded. We'd be glad to help you find hotel space if you like. Oh, well, that's certainly very nice of you. Sergeant Carter, could I see you a minute, please? Yeah, sure. Excuse me, please. Very pleased from when I'm not bothered sitting back here. What do you mean? Right here, the valise the mother left with Mrs. Lewis. Did you need to come up with anyone? I didn't think so at first. I went over the valise, everything inside, nothing. Then I started putting the things back in the bag. I found this in a stack of diapers right there. It's a paid receipt for a hospital bill, maternity one. Mm, Sent him in the hospital, Tucson, Arizona. Well, there's the patient's name right there at the top. Mm -hmm. Dorothy Miller. <laughs> Twelve thirty p.m. A local broadcast and an APB were gotten out on Dorothy Miller. Then we sent a communication to the Tucson Police Department, laying out the story for them and asking them to check with the Santa Maria Hospital there for a possible lead on the missing mother. Meantime, the baby was removed to the General Hospital. We found accommodations for Mrs. Lewis in a downtown hotel. We dropped her off there, and then we drove back to the bus depot on Sixth Street. <laughs> We tried to locate the driver of the bus on which the Miller woman and her baby had arrived that morning. We were told he was off duty and that he wouldn't report back in until 8 o'clock the following morning. We left our card along with a message for the driver asking him to contact us as soon as he returned. For the rest of the afternoon, Frank and I, along with two other men from juvenile division, checked with all the bus depot personnel, but we were unable to turn up any kind of a lead. After that, we started making the rounds of the hotels, bars, restaurants, and taxicab stands in the neighborhood. The same result, nothing. 7.55 a.m. the following morning, I reported back in for work. Good morning, Joe. Well, hi, Betty. Frank check in yet? Yeah, he went out for a minute, so he'll be right back. Mm -hmm. What do you know? Anything new? Communication for you from the Tucson PD. Kickback on that query with that office in yesterday. Mm -hmm. Did you see this? Yeah, it confirms the fact the woman had her baby in that hospital. Still not much hope, though. Yeah, I see. We checked out her last known address in Tucson. She moved. No forwarding address, no line on her friends or relatives. Well, the day the baby was born seems to check out. Yeah, it's June 24th. Makes the baby just about seven weeks old. This part doesn't make much sense, though. The Miller girl's description? Yeah. Ms. Lewis said Dorothy Miller was small and dark. Long red hair, dark eyes. People at the hospital described her as being fairly tall. Blue eyes, short brown hair, about 29 or 30 years old. Mrs. Lewis said the Miller girl just turned 20, didn't she? Yeah. It doesn't figure, does it? A little too much to write off as coincidence, two Dorothy Millers having babies, same day, same hospital. I just happened to think, this description of the Miller girl. Huh? 